and welcome to another episode of Olsen Wanam. I'm Deborah Prentice. In this episode, Florence Jondowo gives us an insight into vandalism, which is a common sight in Port Mosby. However, there is a big distinction between graffiti vandalism and street art. We highlight the difference as well as what category of offense graffiti vandalism comes under. Unlawful graffiti is an all too common sight that you see in all centers throughout Papua New Guinea, including the nation's capital, Port Mosby. Many people tend to take little or no notice at all. Before we continue on, let us differentiate between graffiti art and graffiti vandalism. The legal distinction between graffiti art and graffiti vandalism is permission. When permission is granted to a group or individual to do his artwork on either public or private property, it is considered street art or public art. And without permission, that is graffiti vandalism. Graffiti vandalism is the willful destruction or damaging of property such as spray painting your name or other artwork in a manner that defaces the property's value. There are laws in place to address this practice in PNG and Chief Inspector Tundu gives us an insight to what the laws state. With, with gravity vandalism, most of the gravities, uh, uh, the complaints, uh, normally they come to the station but they are done especially in the cover of darkness when people are not watching. So, you know, it's hard to uh, find the suspects involved. And sometimes they run away. Only once, one or two occasions when property owners or security guards who are protecting the property, when they are caught, then they bring to police and we do arrest. Maximum fine is 50 kina. So when you, when you talk about 50 kina maximum fine, the cost of apprehending, bringing the person to the police station, then having the court file done. And it's done in three copies, obtaining witness statements, and then taking the prisoner to court. And if like some of the young youths on the street who uh, all the time involved in writing gravities, when we keep them in the cells, we need to feed them. So the cost is very high to deal with offense that is classified by law, which is a maximum penalty of 50 kina. It doesn't really, really make sense if you look at it even like in a business term. The cost involved for property owners to fix their defaced property outweighs the maximum fine that offenders have to pay. When you see the penalty involved, it's, it's minor. The maximum penalty is a 50 kina fine. And, and, and that's all. So it, it really, you know, wastes the police resources, time, even the owner's time to, to you know, <clears throat> do up a court file, bring him to court. The exercise of bringing offenders to court causes more than to deal with the offense itself. So, so it, it puts you know, us in a you know, sort of a limbo position where we would really want to see the lawmakers, especially, especially the, you know, the parliamentarians, uh, to look at these issues very, very seriously. Based upon this fact, there is now an appeal for the laws on unlawful graffiti to be amended to act as deterrence to graffiti vandalism. It's a very big challenge to you know the the the, the community, the people, the business houses, and even even the lawmakers to really look at the law itself and to to amend the law to so that 
penalties can be higher. And then it will, the law itself will stop people from, now they will know that if they go on, you know, defacing walls or writing gravities on, 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 on walls or in, 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 on the streets or in, in anywhere around, they know that they will have a ma maximum, you know, prison term penalties. So basically the law is the only way to uh, deter or stop uh, you know, uh, people from, people from uh, uh, <coughs> making gravities or writing on the world, defacing walls, the, you know, uh, causing all this confusion and writing, you know, I mean, changing the good paintings that we have, for example, the cocky, uh, you know, wall, sea wall. Uh, we have it, RH, the Chinese uh, embassy, obviously the uh, parliament roundabout, all these things. You know, good drawings are being made, but in the night, you know, somebody comes and, you know, signs his signature, you know, so-called gang group signature, or sometimes it's like a, they, they take pride in their little groupings in the, in the streets or in little settlements that they have. So, and, and that is where it's, it's becoming very, very challenging for, you know, sometimes police just give up to waste time. watching Olsa Mwana. In this segment, we feature the 675 Aerosol, a graffiti group that do organized street art to beautify the walls at various locations in Port Mosby. Street artists are very creative and the artwork they do can amaze you. However, the challenge is displaying their artwork in a more organized and lawful manner. 675 Aerosol is a graffiti group that do organized street art to beautify Port Mosby. Their artwork can be found in various locations such as Koki and Elabi Seawall, Vision City Wall, Pohola, and the SP Brewery Fence. They aim to show other street artists that there is a way to put out their artwork for people to see in a lawful manner. The street artists come and vandalize the streets. We're just, we're just trying to show them to do something good with what, what they are doing right now. It's not, we are not trying to criticize them, but we're just trying to help them find a way of doing something good with their work. Richard Denny is a transformed street artist and he is part of the 675 Graffiti Group. He shares his personal experience as to why he joined 675. The thing that made me went into commercial graffiti was like, is every time you paint on, on walls, you vandalize, cops catch you, nothing happens. You go straight to heaven, as in you die or something. So I had to do it, I wanted to do it so badly, I, I, f I was looking for ways and then 675 happened so I had to go in there because if I do it for 675 I won't get caught or I won't get bashed up at the side of the road or something, something like that. If you do it legally you won't get hit because it's authorized by government for you to paint on the walls. It gives you the opportunity to put, like, put yourself out there and express yourself with what artwork you have, rather than hiding in the dark. When asked what his thoughts were about other street artists vandalizing their artwork, he responded saying, I don't feel bad about it, it's because when they vandalize on my work, it's like they're telling me, that's not better. You have to do another piece that's better than that. So they're helping me to help them. So where we put 675 graffiti work is like, it's like the heaven, heaven spots. Everybody, want, everybody looks at those spots. So if you go and put your name there, everybody sees your name. I go, I take your name out, and I put a great artwork on it. 
from 675 or so. And they can come and just put it. We don't have grudges against graffiti artists. It's the nature of graffiti. You can't, the desire is there. People want to paint. You can't stop them completely. The Olsen Wanam team had the opportunity to visit one of their artwork site. So can you tell us about how all this came about and you guys coming and um, doing this artwork on the SP Brewery um, fence? We painted at Vision City wall, all the walls around Mosby, and then SP Brewery came up to us and asked us if we can do something on their wall. And then we came up here and it made them a beautiful piece of artwork, graffiti work. We don't, we don't mind about graffiti artists coming up, vandalizing on our work. It's the, it's the nature of graffiti. In the graffiti world, anybody can paint whenever, wherever he wants. We're just trying to show them to do something good with what they have. Just, just to show them a good example of with good graffiti, not vandalism. It's not about, it's not all about the fame, it's just self-expression. Welcome back to the program. The Olsen 1M team took to the streets and got views from the public as to what they think of graffiti vandalism on private and public properties and its maximum penalty as stated by the law. Earlier on this program, we discussed the maximum penalty fine for graffiti vandalism to be 50 kina. We then question if the lawmakers who passed this law took into consideration the amount of money property owners spend to fix their properties after being vandalized by unlawful graffiti artists. What can be done? First thing is, as I've said, we would like to see the, the you know, we would like to see that the gravity law itself, the law governing or the law policing gravity, the maximum, there should be a maximum penalty somewhere. If they are caught, they must be imprisoned. Say, for example, maybe two years or more. And then it, it, it automatically gives a, you know, a signal to the community that you, know, you write up on the wall now, the penalty is two years in prison, or maximum, say, 1,000 kilo fines if you are caught. So then they know that they, they, they will be, you know, squarely punished. On a property, all work on Spain, Vika, Manina, all Sikana put in all put in house, all number out of fencing number out of time, all money, all prime law put in gravity, all same, also I'm just taking five minutes, all same law making, but all, in fact, all, um, all back up in post law starting here. All same, so we need, need talk all same, all must, I think um, I'm out of man, I'm a man, so if all man walk in damage of some kind, they should give them a percent penalty, penalty law because you know, a man or man or graffiti or some kind, because it's not good. In public area, or put him on man, mark mark or some kind of wall, say I'm not good. So on a block, like some house must give penalty or man or walking graffiti laws or property or man of some kind. My opinion is that the penalty for the vandalism and defacing of the property is uh, not tough, it's less. There should be more tougher penalties, uh, preferably to increase the penalty from 50 kina to 100 or 500 kina, or if not, uh, lock them up for three months. This is 
now kind of passing on walking was in vandalism now was in work bar up in old place now let me know good plato mas you know i blow in all city na was in resident na all money was in all workman public uh it's all so it's like kind passing of now you must walking big plato fine go long kind man all also only walking kind passing so in that way now and by um also by minimizing this like kind yeah passing uh, also in side blow vandalism ma So now by all money for it, the walking placard passing. Law is stuff or some top like fifty kind of fine for whoever is seen doing graffiti on the side. I think this law should let him go on top. So man, he, man or Mary found doing graffiti penalty law should go on top. And the owner or like the owners of the building. Like only come out, all looking this lah. Lo rousing this lah graffiti. It's an extra expense again, which is not good. Welcome back. To conclude this week's program, we feature a short film that shows the official graffiti removal day for New South Wales, Australia. The question is, is this something that we can adopt to curb graffiti vandalism in Papua New Guinea? The New South Wales government disagrees. Under the 2008 Graffiti Control Act, a graffiti-related offence includes marking or defacing property, posting bills, and possession of graffiti implements, including spray paint and marker pens. Types of graffiti include tagging, etching, and murals, which are a popular medium of expression for street artists. A recent survey conducted by the Australian Bureau of Statistics shows that 21% of respondents in New South Wales believe graffiti represents a social disorder problem in their local area. A total of 95,000 incidents in New South Wales were reported by police between 2002 and 2011, with Sydney ranking sixth on the list of local government areas affected the most. In response to these statistics, the New South Wales government partnered with Rotary to establish a statewide Graffiti Prevention and Removal Day. Graffiti Removal Day strives to highlight the problem of graffiti and encourage people to volunteer their time to remove and prevent it. This year, 1,500 volunteers participated at 300 clean-up sites across New South Wales. Mayor of Strathfield, Julian Vacari, joined Scouts Australia, Girl Guides and the New South Wales Police in the clean-up. Graffiti is a, um, a blight on the community, so uh, at a local government level um, uh, our residents have an expectation that councils will get in there and do the best they can to, to negate uh, graffiti and that's what uh, Graffiti Removal Day is all about. It's also an opportunity though to, um, more importantly, to build community, to get people out together to, to chat, talk, share. Indo believes removing graffiti isn't the way to deal with street artists and vandals. They should not should, it would be a great idea to collaborate with the artists who actually are doing good work. They need to spend less money on graffiti removal and more money on actual um, studying the demographic, who the graffiti artists are, separate them from graffiti to street art, and then, you know, come up with a strategy, come up with an idea of how to, you know, work together, because this shit's not going to ever change. This is going to go on forever. Marrickville Council is one of the few councils in New South Wales working with local artists to combat graffiti vandalism. Arts and Cultural Development Coordinator Victoria Johnston explains how. Uh, well, Perfect Match program is part of Marrickville Council's initiatives to, to prevent um, antisocial behaviour and in particular unwanted graffiti um, through encouraging and fostering creativity and legitimate forms of social behaviour. The council played Cupid between artists and property owners who wanted to embrace street artists and their work. The works were installed six months ago, all on walls that were tagged daily. A lot of these people had been constantly painting their walls to omit graffiti. And what has happened is not one of the walls, we did 15 sites across the local government area and not one of those walls has um, been tagged. While street art has combated vandalism in Marrickville Council, Julian Vacari believes Strathfield Council will benefit from other alternatives. There's a theory about graffiti removal that if you uh, target the graffiti quickly 
and you keep targeting the same graffiti, eventually the graffiti artists drop off. Victoria disagrees. My view is, personally, I'm a resident and I would rather have my ratepayer money going towards creativity and paying artists rather than having paying for chemicals and street removal teams to go and just wash it off walls. I think the model of perfect match whereby property owners collaborate with artists, it comes from the community, it comes grassroots and it breaks down a lot of the myths about street art. And that's all we have time for on Awesome 1M. If you have any stories or comments you would like to share, please send us an email via the address on your screen or visit our Facebook page. From the Awesome 1M team, thank you for watching and we'll see you again next week.